What's up everyone, in this video we're going to look at what it takes to build a multi-step form like the one you see here in front of you. What you're going to see in this video is basically the wiring up and creation of what it takes to build a step form. Now I already have a UI laid out that we're going to pre-use, but what I would suggest, and I'm going to take a tour quickly of some different multi-step UIs here over on Dribbble, but there is, uh, there is no lack of inspiration when it comes to building multi-step forms in terms of what's out there. So here we see one with dots. Uh, here we see one with icons across here. And uh, let's see, I've got a couple other, other examples as well. Um, even onboarding forms like this. Now, prior to diving in, why pay attention to this video? Well, a little bit of data backed um, information as it relates to utilizing these in a conversion environment. Here we see a form that was one long, long form. It was pitted against a form that was a multi-step form, easily, more easily broken up into a couple different sections, all the same fields. And what this resulted in was a statistically significant 95% confidence, 39% uh, improvement on conversions for that form. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that, um, you know, that's gonna hold true for every different type of form. It's just one uh, data point for why these types of experiences do indeed uh, tend to work better when it comes to providing your users quality experiences, which if you're on this channel and watching this video, then that's what you're all about. And I love that. So let's get started and dive into what we have here. So real quick, I'm just gonna back off at least this part of the UI where you'll probably want to, um, I'll let you go ahead and build the types of fields that you want. So I've got a few um, just different form fields here and we'll use some forward and back buttons and we will just get into the discussion around, you know, making this UI come to life. But basically, you know, as we looked at all of these progress uh, indicators across the top, we can see that, so here we have a progress bar. Now there is, why don't we just go ahead and we'll run this with a progress bar as well, running across the bottom of this part here. So you'll get, this is a super bonus where we're gonna call this top progress and we're gonna insert a progress bar here so we can see all the different cool things going on. Okay, so percentage right now, we'll say that it's 30 or 33 and okay. And so in this bonus setup here, we can see that uh, if we look at what's going on here, so this is this progress bar is gonna be showing off anyone who's interested in this type of UI and then the other one will be showing off anyone interested in this type of UI, which you can see that obviously you would just go and drop those elements onto the page as you think would be best for whatever it is that your design would have. Now I'm just gonna show off. So the idea that you'll wanna do is you'll basically just create one of these elements and then copy and paste a few in. And then obviously in my UI, I am using this space around because uh, I think that gives a pretty good uh, setup for what we have here and then Let's take a look at what our different forms are. So basic info, we have a fruit slicing question for them to fill out and a Kung Fu question. Okay, so now let's, and, and I've got this set up so that it's gonna be 33%. Um, and maybe I wanna do that 25, uh, I'm not sure, 25, whatever. We'll, we'll have it be full when it's, on, uh, when it's on the Kung Fu or we'll have it at like 98%. But so what we wanna have happen here then is we wanna get some data going on the page. Now in this example, I'm going to just go straight through using uh, state variables on the page to record all the progress. And then on the last um, on the last submission, the final one, then you know I would save all of the person's information and you know move on from there. So, uh, but you could also set up something where between each of these steps, you're saving data to the database. I'll assume that anyone viewing this 
uh, tutorial is fairly new to the world of bubble so i'll discuss how to uh, go ahead and do that just so you have an idea because if you're coming here for just you know typically the best way to have it is to have it all laid out and that's what we're going to do in this video so now let's get started let's go ahead i'm just going to drop uh i'm going to get a state going on this and let's think about the type of data so i have three spots so i'm going to say uh i'll just call this the step number and this is just going to be a number we'll default that to one and then we'll add another custom state. So we're going to store the value. We have four, four different values. We have name, hobbies, fruit slicing ability, and the favorite kung fu move. So we'll just add those in. Okay, so we've got a placeholder for all of these to receive the data. Let's go and let's do our workflow wiring up for this. So what I want to have is I want to have some conditionals on both the the background image of this, so let's go, okay, we're going to do one and then we're going to copy it over. So let's say that when the, what's the name of this thing? It is the step number. When the step number is one, then background color is going to be this blue and so this is the uh, this is the guts of what it takes to wire up the UI so we're gonna we're gonna grab this now onto here and we'll say that the font color is the same blue now with all of that let me go copy the conditional expression onto these two pieces of text Update the number to two and three. And you know what? That would actually, I think this was, that that's a, that's a mistake. This is when it's one. This is when it's one. Or let's do this. This will be cleaner. So we'll say when it's less than two, less than or equal to two, less than or equal to one, and less than or equal to three. So that will cover it uh, across the board as it's building up. And then we'll want to grab this. We'll do the same update on this one. We'll get the less than or equal to. And then pasting this in here. two and three. And then we'll want to add some condi conditionals now to this progress bar. Let's just rough in a conditional here. It's not exactly. So when less than or equal to one, that's not what we want. It's when it is less than or equal to two that we want the, pro the percentage to be 66. And when it's less than or equal to three, I mean, just because I don't want it to be 100% because, um, well, so we'll just put it at 95 because then it shows, you know, there's the last thing they need to do is just click the button and send it off. Okay, cool. So now that we have our UI ready to utilize this data, let's take a look at what it's going to be for these buttons to actually do the uh the steps that we we want them to do so let's go ahead use we're gonna set up our very first workflow here in this video and then with these workflows we're after that those are set up we're going to test them and then once that's tested we'll talk about uh, that'll be kind of complete for this uh run through of what it will be but then at the very end uh stick around if you would like to understand what it would be for uh creating 
a way to save the data to the database across uh, each of these steps. So let's go ahead and we're going to do, we're going to set the state on this one. And there's a couple of these things we're going to do. So we have uh, all of our states are here. So right now this one is name. And let's see, it's going to be the input hobby's name value. And then there is the hobbies, and that's going to be the hobbies value. And then we're going to keep track of what's going on with our step number. And we are going to, we could just say it's two. I'm going to move it to, I'm going to say it's the step number as it is, and I'm going to add one to it. Um, this way we could go back and forth between things if we, if we want to wire that up. So let's, let's go and let's see, let's add a workflow here. And on this one, I for sure want one of these. And the one I want here is the fruit slicing ability. Okay, great. Uh, that one evaluates to a number, so let's go and actually make the... Just delete this one off. I wasn't sure about that when I was creating it because I inter inserted them as text items in the list, but it, it read it correctly. Amazing. Okay, so fruit slicing ability. And then that that uh, this one holds true as well. Now, if we were to upgrade this back one, so in this back button, what we'll do is we'll just take the multi-step and then we'll do minus one. And let's call this button back step two so we can keep things clean. Button go, step one, step two, step three, and step three as well on this one. So amazing work. Like we can see the, uh, the relative ease of what it takes to set up a feature like this. Because when we do it intelligently, for example, the, both of these back buttons do the same. Uh, they just do minus one. So uh, then on this last one, we'll add a workflow. And rather than, so I think on this one, what we want to do is we will make changes to the current user. And now I actually don't have fields in my database for this. So let's uh, let me set that up. Okay, and so for each of these, I can go and look for where these are stored. So the multi-step, uh, let's say, so this is the name, um, multi-step hobby. And, you know, so I've opted obviously to just make one push over to the database at the end. Um, and that's the way I've got it set up. But let's go Let's go now and let's take a look at this. Um, I think we'll also want to, nope, there's one other thing we want to do. We want to control the visibility on these uh, form fields when, the, when those workflows are hidden. So what we don't have yet is we don't have any um, conditionals on these. But what I actually, I think what I prefer to do, because I want to add some animation effects, I could I could add a conditional here, and I could say that when the multi-step uh, state step number is two, for example, or something, then, you know, this is one is not visible or whatever. But I prefer actually to use animations in between my steps. So to do that, what we're going to do is 
I'm going to go to Element Actions, Animate. I am going to, let's see, the form body one. I'm going to, I'm going to send it out to the left. Slide left out. We'll give it a custom duration of 400. We'll also put that at the start so that we get some. And while that one's sliding out, I actually want to pause because Bubble will run all of the workflows consecutively and then, or not consecutively, concurrently at the same time. Unless there's a pause or it's waiting for a previous workflow step. So now we want form body two. If that other one is sliding out to the left, we want this one to slide in from the right. And then we're going to do something pretty similar on, so that's when button goes step one. We'll do this set up here as well. And this is just going to create a really nice um, effect through all of this stuff. There's a lot of ways to do the same thing in Bubble. Um, I'm sure many people can appreciate that. And uh, I'm just hopefully giving you the um, the idea is getting the getting the wheels turning uh, so that you can see the potential of what your ideal setup would be and go from uh, this video to having that done hopefully in you know under a half hour or so that'd be a great session if you spent time watching this video and then you know made it over to the next one okay so maybe on this next one what do I want to have happen I think I want a success message which I'll add to with the UI in a second here. And then so once all of this stuff is done, just grab this form body, call it four. It is also not visible on page load and collapsed when hidden, so amazing. And then we'll bring in this final thing and then we'll test it. Amazing work to make it this far. We've got a significant amount of workflows. I mean, um, you know, it's not bad, but uh, but we we churned through a, a good amount of, of items here. But now let's actually go see this thing in progress. And you know what? The, uh, the narrating and making decisions live on the screen got me on that last one. So all of these are actually greater than or equal to. So greater than or equal to two, greater than or equal to three, and then on these ones, greater or equal to two and three for these particular conditionals. Okay, cool. So uh, now let's go ahead and um, let's make a test. Okay, so we see that nicely slide out. I'm not the greatest at this game, but so we'll do that. And then number three, all right, uh, definitely the crane kick. Okay, let's go. Okay, so it looks like we have one final thing to do there. Slide in from the right. Oh yeah, this one we want to update to that. Cool. So let's refresh that. That slides over, these things update. Crane kick, let's go. Success. Okay, there you have it. So. Thank you so much for joining along on this video. Hope you found it pretty helpful. If you did, subscribe to the channel. It means a lot to me. And uh, give the video a like, and I'll see you in a future video.